welcome to this uh, new Meet the PI session. This new session in ECIO is intended to highlight new research in the field of interventional oncology. And today I have the chance to chair this session with uh, my dear colleagues, Philippe Pereira. And we welcome a young interventional radiologist from Strasbourg who has developed a new technique of treatment of desmoid tumors. So, Doctor, how do we spell it? Ganji? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Dr. Ganji, we are all yeah. yours for, for your talk. Thank you so much, Alban. You know, I'm happy to be uh, between you and presenting the second uh, randomized study on uh, cryodesmo, the cryodesmo uh, study two which is a new study we will present. Before doing this, I will make uh, present the first cryodesmo, which was the first study we have done, uh, which has the background of desmoid tumor. As you know, that's a quite rare tumor. Uh, we don't have really a standard uh, approach of this uh, tumor in our, uh, and the efficiency of this tumor. That's why we have proposed in desperate cases first, uh, the desmoid uh, cases which are, have resisted to treatment, the first cryo uh, treatment. The first cryo uh, pr proposition was a prospective open phase two study exploring cryotherapy in uh, this advanced uh, desmoid tumors. Means, you know, when we went to these patients, they have already two lines of medical treatment with no result and progressive uh, uh, case of uh, desmoid tumors. We have done this case and what was the goal of the cryodesmo one? It was to see if we can stabilize the tumor with cryotherapy. And the secondary uh, goal was pain, quality of life. But the first one was if we can stabilize the tumor after 12 months, that was the se selection. As you can see, because of this two lines of treatment, non-successful, we were facing quite large tumors. Uh, the largest diameter was near nine centimeters. That was making the study quite difficult. But however, as you can see, the goal of the treatment, the first time, progression-free survival of 85% was reached at the end of the study. It was really, really, very, I think, very successful as, at the point that the oncologists were beginning to send more and more patients even outside the study to us. Uh, the toxicity and non-major complications uh, were quite, you know, frequent. We have a few side effects which were quite... Uh, sometimes severe with edema, skin burns, but all of them were quite well managed in the uh, right hands. It means, you know, when you have a very good interventional radiologist used to cryotherapy, these complications are quite rare. As you can see, the quality of life was quite good. Majority of the patients had a very good pain relief after the treatment. That was so successful that we have begun to propose it in many patients outside the study. Oncologists were so surprised with the result that they asked before the publication even of the CRIDES one to begin to propose again another prospective study, including the patients as a first-line treatment. That was very encouraging to, to propose uh, to put the patients on a first-line means after a period of observation or uh, period of uh, just observation of the patients to propose cryo at the same time with two lines, one lines, medical treatment, one lines, cryo. It was, again, as you have seen, uh, proposed as a PHRC uh, with a budget of 800,000 uh, euro accepted. This is how we will do it. As you can see, first of all, we will have a watchful waiting. If the tumor is progressing, we will propose randomized cryoablation or medical treatment. The medical treatment is open means they can propose whatever they want. That could be anti-angiogenic, that could be chemotherapy, that could be anti-inflammatory. And then we will see if the patient is progressing or not, we can cross lines. This is very important. The primary endpoint, again, is the free survival, non-progression of the tumor. Secondary endpoint will be quality of life, uh, and pain, and uh, we will see. And we will compare both lines together. This is a big, big progress. Uh, with the oncologists who are proposing this as a first line. I was not really thinking that it will happen so fast, but it is happening. The discussion of the study is always this watchful waiting uh, period, which could be always a discussion. Means I don't think we need to do a too long with, uh, watchful waiting. At the moment, you see a progression. 
you need to immediately include the patient uh, in the study. I think that's very, very important to do. That will be two different centers. Type one centers will randomize, will do the treatment and will follow up. Some centers uh, not having the ablations uh, point means they don't have any cryoablation. They will not randomize. They will just do the medical treatment and the follow up. I think that's very promising. We will begin in the next month, I think in May, the first inclusion in France uh, to prove that prospective randomized study proving that cryoablation is as efficient or I hope even more than medical treatment. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to answer your question. So, Ganji, very uh, interesting study indeed. Uh, Philippe, do you have any question or comment? Yes, uh, Afshin, thank you, first of all, for the successful story with the decimal one, let me say. <laughs> and, and now to start a prospective one of my studies is very good. Um, just a couple of, of questions uh, regarding the wedge for the active surveillance. Um, do, do you think it is necessary or you have a minimal, minimally invasive treatment? Uh, that, you... that's, a, that's an excellent question, Philippe. That was the big question with the oncologist. And you know, this is something we have put in the first line everywhere in the world. They think that when you discover a desmoid tumor, you need to watch it because some of them as you said, uh, should we wait so long or not? Some of them are responding and regressing spontaneously. This could happen. And I think that's why they propose this. The question, which is very interesting for me is, I don't want to wait too much. I want that the one month do already an examination. If there is a change, we need to include the patients. That was the big discussion with oncologists. I said, okay, watchful waiting. I'm happy with it, but not three months. I don't want to wait three months before deciding. If at one month or clinically you see a progression of symptoms or the volume of the tumor, we need to include them. But that was the condition to include the patients. Mm -hmm. That was a big discussion. And you know, the point which was very successful in the Desmo one is that Desmo two proposition came from the oncologist and not from us. Yeah, it's, it's really a successful story for, for IO. Um, regarding the, the the PFS, yeah, the PFS, you have on one on one arm you have a cryoablation ablation, uh, inducing necrosis, shrinkage of the tumor, and on the other hand you have a medical treatment. Uh, you will not have any necrosis in a, in a medic after a medical treatment. Mm -hmm. Probably not really shrinkage. Uh, you are just looking at the morphological aspect or also uh, do, you, do you imagine that you will make PET CT to look at the activity or, of the that's tumor? An, uh, that's an excellent question. So, Philippe, we take the embryosis, means, you know, with the cryo, we'll see the, the necrosis, you are right. What we will watch with the antiandrogenic or chemotherapy is the shrinkage of the tumor, reduction of the, the tumor mass, which is not so fast. But if we see a change, you know, at three months, a small shrinkage or a decrease of contrast enhancement with the antiandrogenic, we will continue the treatment. But if we see any progression in size or contrast enhancement, we need to change lines. Mm -hmm. uh, or symptomatic patients, you know, that's, that's what we will do. I hope the cross lines uh, will be in favor of cryo because I hope we will face tumor which are not so big. Mm -hmm. Means first mm -hmm. line will not be nine centimeters tumors. You know, this is, this was, uh, and the, in the complication rates of the cryodesmo one, we have seen size mm -hmm. was very proportional with complications rate. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, and uh, I've seen, I, I'm not in the field of uh, desmoid tumors at all. It's something that I don't know, but is there any chance that you can capture with the biopsies any uh, prognostic factors that could uh, lead to one treatment or the other? That's an, again, a very good question. You're right. There is a suspicion, which has not been proven, that in the mutation of beta catenin, there are different category. Uh, we know that, that some of them looks like very aggressive, some of them less. Uh, we hope that, you know, because with all we have done to, to here with the cryodesmo 1 and cryodesmo 2, that's the same, the histology and the genetic have been analyzed. And we want, in the retrospective part, to analyze if one of this genetic, if it's true that the F-type is worse than the A 
or the others are not. But this is something we look at it and it looked like, it seems like, but there is no proof that some genetical mutations are worse than the others. It means we need to be more aggressive with them. But that would be, that should be proven uh, retrospectively with all this genetical analysis you are doing. Mm -hmm. And I assume also that uh, your center is a referral center for, I would say probably most of the east of France and probably further uh, out in Germany or in Belgium or whatever. But the numbers are, are quite big, yeah? 150 desmoid tumors. So how quickly do you think you will be able to recruit in that multi-centric study? Uh, first of all, we can just include for the, because that's a French, uh, you know, grant, we need to, just to include people who are insured in France. That's the first one means, you know, all the other patients cannot be included. Uh, the second is 150 is a, a large number of the patient, but because it's first line, it will not be like the first one. We have included 50 patients in less than one year. In less than one year, all centers have included the 50 uh, patients, which were second line resistance. We think as a first line discovery of the patient, we will have more patient which we can include. That's what we hope so. But you know, I think one or two years should be okay to include those patients. You will have also some from West and Germany, I presume. <laughs> right. You know, the, the point is, you know, we hope so, but again, they should be insured in France because that's a French grant. Uh, they, they want us to treat French, not just French yeah. patient, but insured in France patient. They should have the Sécurité Sociale. Okay. Uh, okay. You had no time to go more in details of the study, but w would you like also quality of life and, and symptom improvement? Because it's also maybe something that is advantageous for, for interventional radiology. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what we have proven in the, in the cryodesmo one that I showed you that 85% of non-progression at one year. And what was very interesting in the first one was then at six months, you don't have progression you don't see usually a progression after this. It means that six months, if you're happy, usually is a good result. And quality of life was even better. Near 90% of the patients were happy with their symptoms. Means, as you said, we have included this again okay. as a second line, as a quality of life and pain, uh, because this is even more impressive than a progression. And, and just one last question, uh, uh, Ashin. The, the, the median size close to nine centimeters in the first study. Do you expect to, to collect smaller tumors? Do you think Absolutely. that small tumors are surgically resected still? No, I hope not. I hope not, you know, because I think in France particularly, uh, we are not operating anymore with the small tumors. I think there is an accidental resection. Yes, they think that's a sarcoma or they think that's, uh, I don't know, another diagnostic, they can operate them. But usually uh, we push them to do the biopsy first and it's very rare they operate the tumor. I think uh, it, it's quite accepted that surgery should be just done when we have a mechanical problem or something like this. If not, it should be avoided. And we hope that we will get tumors less than five centimeters already uh, in all cases, nearly all. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope so, because larger tumor have been discovered already. And as I said, the patient includable in this study should not have any previous treatment. Means they should okay. not have been treated with anything else. My, my last question may be for regarding the financial support. It's interesting for every interventional radiologist uh, who are hearing us now. Uh, is that the financial support, is that a private uh, Society no, or is a public, it's a it's hundred percent national uh, government uh, grant. That's why you know, as I said, you know, including the patient should yeah. be in France. That's a national grant, and they pay for all material part of it and all this uh, examination and the follow up. The okay. first one was the same thing. And one thing I I want to underline is the help of the patient association of Desmoid. The SOS Desmoid was very helpful to do both study and to get the money. It means we should never forget the association of the patients. When you have a study like this, communicate with them because you are very helpful and they have a great influence on the governmental part of it, a lot more than ours. Okay, excellent. Thank you. I think it's time to, to conclude with you, uh, Professor Ganji. Thank Thanks you so much. A first successful story, and hopefully next year or two years from now, the final successful story of Cryodesmo 2. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.